Hey, welcome to my channel. And um, got something a little unusual for us. Uh, this is a hot water boiler. Uh, you may have uh, seen this boiler being delivered in an earlier video. Well, there it is sitting uh, on the basement uh, block there. And that is the indirect tank. Again, something a little unusual. We don't uh, usually install indirect tanks. But this is the way this one worked out due to uh, uh, gas capacity issues. So that's what we have here is a slant-in sentry. There's the rating plate, 90,000 British Dolby units. There is the uh, wiring diagram for the hydro-level uh, control, which makes this uh, a very nice boiler. Uh, there is the instruction sheet for the Hydrostat 3200 Plus. And I'll put these back with the instructions right there for wiring. So, um, let's get back to this. Essentially, uh, this setup is really a hot water, domestic hot water supply uh, setup so that occasionally heats the house. Uh, so this is prioritized. Uh, you have the outlet going there. Uh, that's inch and a half going to inch and a quarter. And then we got one inch ProPress coming through here. We've got some Webstone isolation flanges and a purge valve here. Uh, this is the the handle is reversible, so there should be uh, a, a mark on the stem because this is can be altered. Um, this is the other side, so if the circulator uh, needs a replacement, uh, you can easily do it without uh, introducing a whole lot of air. And we're going into a brass uh, one by three quarter 90. The instructions call for one inch supply. Um, there's the shot of this. They no longer make this size, uh, this type or model. Um, this is old stock, so this is from the boiler supply, as you can see. And this is a stainless steel three-quarter inch nipple. This comes out, a stainless three-quarter inch nipple, three-quarter by one brass, because, hey, why not? I like kind of like to make a transition, even though it's really not uh, strictly necessary. Um... One inch union for servicing, flow check or with the drain, and into another Webstone purge station, and back using um, copper pro press into the return. That's a uh, inch and a quarter by one T, and it goes behind the boiler, comes out back here, and in uh, via an inch and a quarter by inch and a half um, nipple. This is the new gas drop. Uh, this was uh, replacing an old Columbia steel oil-fired boiler, which was removed. Took a little bit more to remove than I thought. This is the base plate from the boiler that I had to cut off to be able to get it uh, through the door. It was fun. Uh, this is the relatively new tank uh, by some standards. Um, so this will be removed by others and the pipes cut off and capped off. Uh, to prevent uh, inadvertent fuel dumping. <laughs> Happens every year to somebody. So we want to make sure it doesn't happen here. Um, so let's see. Yes, there will be uh, a new chimney. A chimney is being relied by uh, Champion Chimneys, we believe. This is an 8 inch. This is the original supply. I've got uh, a temporary thimble here for the um, 5 inch flue. Uh, the damper, the flu damper there uh, is wired in. I've got this temporarily wired. Uh, don't look too close. Don't judge me <laughs> too harshly on that. Uh, and so I, again, we're prioritizing the hot water. So essentially, as far as uh, the boiler is concerned, it's, this is the heat, uh, the typical Honeywell control here. Um, probably a little antiquated, but it works. Make sure that's straight. There we go. Uh, I've replaced the uh, ridiculously sized boiler drain with a full port Webstone uh, boiler drain there. And this is the cold water inlet uh, with a the drain there. And ProPress to three quarter inch 
material here. And uh, yeah, we'll start here. Uh, you can see the original pipe is, uh, I got the uh, patina and I had to cut those in earlier. And then uh, we start fresh here. And boy, what a confusion. Sorry about that. And there's a three quarter by half T. And that is the supply, a half inch shutoff valve, a backflow preventer, uh, probably only one of the few parts that I'm reusing from the old boiler because that's relatively new. There's another shutoff valve, a male by female half inch uh, cutoff, a whipstone. This is a um, EAS enhanced air separator, I believe. Let me think. I'm, I might be misquoting you on that. Uh, yeah, it's enhanced air separator, uh, inch and a quarter. You might not be able to read that for the glare. Uh, you can feed it through several ways here. I'm using uh, bushing here to feed it with the um, fresh water. And uh, as the uh, supply comes up, uh, any air is entrained is then sent via this three quarter inch ProPress uh, pipe to the um, Bell and Gossage fil uh, fil troll, air troll, excuse me, air troll, which uh, reduces the likelihood of the tank becoming waterlogged. A uh, nice bit of, and it also acts as an air uh, intake if you if you need to service a valve. You got a nice full port half inch um, ball valve there. You just got a male by female valve ball valve with a half inch by um, three quarter hose fitting there. And um, so we come out of here, go into an isolation uh, webstone uh, valve with rotating flange. We have a Taiko 110, which approximates the old uh, Taiko uh, 110, uh, the, the ones you had to oil uh, because the flow requires it, we believe. So this is the uh, purge and isolation flange there. We're going up to a union, another valve, because why not? And we got a flow check here, probably the... The only other thing we've uh, kept from the original boiler, and this uh, this is where the tank was originally tied. So I've just got a purge valve here for feeding uh, full pressure, city pressure through here. And then that is the supply. Where's the return? Ah, it's right over here. That's the return. There's only one pipe, folks. It's uh, kind of unusual. Those are Taco Venturi fittings. And they, take a look at this. Rescued this from the dumpster uh, when my company I used to work for I was tossing it out. Cool, no problem. Uh, let's see. There's fittings from 1950, it seems. And this is what's inside. There, close up there. So it shows a typical water flow pattern through the main and riser connections. So the flow goes through an ordinary T here, and then there is this Venturi T. There's another close up there. And there's somebody, I guess, smoking crack because he's trying to figure out how to how to test it. And this is all of the uh, piping diagrams on how to use it. Uh, there's a circulator. It's one of the first uh, water circulators that they had. It failed miserably, and they had to recall it. Uh, and this is the uh, Taiko 110, which was the uh, high volume circulator, which these things needed because each there's your pump curves for the various pumps uh, through the unit there. Uh, charts and graphs on how to design all this stuff. Wonderful, just wonderful uh, resource there. Um, so basically duplicating this flow, we believe will provide uh, better comfort for the customer. Um, the What was there was a 110, and then somebody then uh, years later uh, put in this um, Takeo 007, and um, it worked.
but trouble is the Dago Tego Double Seven it just doesn't have the water volume uh, to overcome the uh, static uh, resistance of those fittings there. Cool. So, oh, let's see. Uh, I think I covered everything. Uh, thank you very much. I hope this video didn't go on too long. And um, be well and stay safe. <laughs>